This new Lobo isn't your daddy's Lobo, is he? Welcome to Origins, where we go over the origins of your favorite superheroes and villains. Today, we're going to be looking at the reinvention of Lobo. I will say this one in the opening. I actually enjoy the new Lobo book. Just forget about the Lobo from the 90s because he was only a parody of superheroes. So while you might not want to accept this new version of Lobo, listen to his origin tale and let me know in the comments what you think down below. The man that would become known as Lobo started as the Emperor's bodyguard, dating the Emperor's daughter, and living on his homeworld of Zarnia. He was painting her picture one morning when he was ordered to report to the palace and assemble his own personal escort guard to assist him in getting the Emperor on the most holy of pilgrimages. But the Emperor's daughter was concerned. Her father was acting strangely and the rebels were on the rise. Something was troubling him, as she said. Nothing will happen to your father. I've sworn to protect the Emperor with my very soul, just as I pledged to protect Zarnia forevermore. They escorted the Emperor to the site and it was there that he drank of the Zarnian lifeblood, the very essence of the planet. Only to be attacked by rebels, the Emperor's bodyguard stood strong, but a sniper shot took the Emperor out through the head. The bodyguard ran over to him, only to find him healing with the words, Fear not, you cannot kill me anymore than you can kill the world. So the bodyguard ran over to fight against the rebels, and as he killed one, they asked him why he protected the Emperor when he was cursed, diseased. The man that would be called Lobo ignored that, stating that he didn't believe in curses. And then the Emperor cut his own wrist so that he could add his blood to the Zarnia lifeblood. The rebels were right though, because the next time that we would see the bodyguard and the princess, they were on the run from their world blowing up around them. He had no idea what was going on, but there was a madness consuming the planet's inhabitants. The princess was in shock. Why is this happening? Her father communed with the planet. But the bodyguard's greatest concern was to save her, to keep her safe, by cutting off the heads of his enemies and slicing off other people's limbs. The world was ending and he had nothing else that he could do. So the two of them pressed forward until they came across a batch of sane people trying to find a way off the planet. And the princess asked the bodyguard, How could these people leave? Zarnia needs them. My father needs them. But the bodyguard thought about that and he told her, Your father needs help. She stared at him in shock. How could you say that? You know it's true. He's been acting strangely and it's been getting worse. The princess wouldn't stand there and listen to this though as she ran off. That's when the bodyguards saw the army running up with a bazooka and shooting down the survivors trying to flee the planet. Emperor's orders, traitors will not be allowed to leave Zarnia. So the bodyguard decided to end this and he ran to the holy site where he finds the emperor cutting himself all over and bleeding into the Zarnia lifeblood pool. He even went as far as to split his own tongue down the middle to add to the blood. That's when the bodyguard walked over and placed his sword to the emperor's throat. How long have you been sick? How long have you been sneaking out here and sharing your blood with the planet? How long have you been poisoning the world? You've got it wrong. Just drink from the planet and you can commune with it and understand, he says motioning to a chalice of blood nearby. But the princess runs over shouting, no, as she swings a blade at the bodyguard's face. And then he stabs her in the stomach. Not you too. As her body falls into the blood pool, the bodyguard chases the emperor into the pool of blood and then he drowns him in it. You must die, and with you, Zarnia, I must be willing to see the killing through. You've damned me! you forced me to become the Lobo, the destroyer of worlds. Lobo then took a nearby ship and he fled the planet as it exploded in space, killing every single member of his race. And as he flies off, he looks down at the last bit of his planet, a tainted chalice of blood sitting next to him, and he drinks it down. I know this might not be your daddy's Lobo, but he's a Lobo that I enjoy. Make sure you check out his stories because as of right now, he's currently teaming up with Sinestro to kill off all of the other members of the Corps. It's quite interesting. I'm Benny and I'll see you guys next time right here.